Hi, I'm Joe, and thanks for watching another episode of Comfortably Sophisticated. Um, I'm, again, sitting in front of my wall of number plates in my daughter's poof chair with a glass of uh, bourbon. Actually, this is gone. I went back to the, uh, the bullet rye whiskey, um, but it's close. And tonight I want to talk about um, being an advocate. And I don't want to scare you out of the gate. Um, I don't think being an advocate is, you know, having to contact your representative all the time uh, or walking into your local municipality or state, um, you know, hunting, you know, grounds you know, like DNR uh, in, our, in the state of Michigan. Um, <clears throat> or starting a YouTube channel, uh, not required. Um, but I think, um, I think being an advocate is as simple as leaving a positive impression with people uh, when we're on our bikes. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that we can do that can be, that, um, that are very simple, um, but it just creates a, a welcoming environment. And I think that does create advocacy, um, that when we leave a positive impression in people's minds, um, that they think of us as um, real friendly human beings, um, but people that they'd love to see more of. So real quick, uh, shout out to the Winona Trails um, group. I'm sporting a leftover shirt from a couple of years ago. They run a uh, uh, fat and skinny tire festival in May um, <clears throat> and the reason why I'm wearing it tonight not because I think that they're like the greatest or the only advocators they are great advocates for the sport of cycling and riding um, but it just happens to be in my heart it's, it's where I first started mountain biking um, the bike shop there um, had lent me a, a single speed Surly 29er and uh, I went out for a ride uh, and, and got hooked. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that story and, and how that re relates to being an advocate in just a second. But, you know, as I was saying a little bit earlier, you know, I think that we leave these positive impressions um, with, with other users. You know, a couple of different things that I try and do when I'm out on the trail. You know, number one, it's just seems to me like it's a super easy thing to do is just smile and say hello to other trail users as I'm passing them by, whether or not they're hikers or runners, um, cross-country skiers in the winter, you know, being courteous, leaving that good impression um, that you enjoy them being there um, with the hopes that then they enjoy you being there. Um, because if people don't like bikers being somewhere because they just don't come off as being very friendly or welcoming, um, you know, I just I just think that doesn't help the cause. That's just maybe my opinion, but I think that's a one way that you could be an, an advocate <clears throat> if you um, wanted to uh, to do that. So every time I ride, I find a way to engage with people that I come across with. Um, so you know, smiling, saying hello, but also. Just simply asking people, the other riders that have stopped, um, you know, if they need anything, uh, making sure that I'm carrying my CO2 and an extra tube, um, maybe a bike link, um, you know, chain link or whatever, quick link, um, and, and being pretty generous with that stuff. Um, I firmly believe that paying it forward is a great way to be an advocate, having that thing you can help another rider that then they can help another rider down the road. Um, I never ask for my stuff back. I never look to get, um, you know, compensated for having a tube or having, you know, a water bottle or whatever. Um, it's just really about making sure that that gets perpetuated. That, that um, you know, the person that you helped, you just have, you know, hope that they will then help somebody else. And typically, from the group that I've seen ride, that's exactly, you know, what happens. So I think it's a um, an easy way to be an advocate. The other thing that I set out to do this year um, was to add to try and find somebody that would be interested in going for a ride with me that ha that has never ridden before or maybe hasn't ridden in a long time. And I think that's a really great and an easy way, theoretically an easy way. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful in doing that this year. Um, I fail at a lot of things, but I do think that that's a great way to get other people included. Um, 
And that's where I'm going to talk about the, the trail uh, down in Winona. The reason I got to ride a bike was because I had a friend that had been riding those trails. And um, we have some friends that have a family cottage down there. And Dean had um, ridden down there um, at the trails a number, of, a number of years and had gotten to know the, um, the owner of Trail House at the, time, at the time. And he had a whole rental fleet of these 29er Surleys. And that was kind of about the time when 29ers were kind of a newer thing. And he was just telling me, oh man, you just gotta try this. This is so much fun, it's such a hoot. And so one Sunday morning we were down there and I grabbed a um, fully rigid, you know, surly single speed 29er and we went for a ride. And it was a riot. Um, and that's, that's the thing that got me into riding. And so it was just a simple invitation to say you would have a fun time doing this. Now I had been road riding for a year or two um, and so it wasn't like I was new to cycling, but it was still just a simple in, in, uh, invitation. Um, and in fact, I've talked to a couple of shops around here about that concept of offering with memberships for the local association that if anybody invites a new rider, um, that there would be, um, you know, a, an easy way to get their hands on a bike, whether or not that be a free couple hour rental or a discounted rental. But the idea of like, if we get new guys, new riders riding, you know, let's, let's reduce the friction of getting riders on bikes. And I've, I've gotten a great response with that so far. So that's one way to be an advocate is just simply inviting some people to go ride with you. The last um, is a little bit maybe self-serving, but I think it's extremely important. Um, I've been a member of our uh, mountain bike association here in Michigan for a number of years, um, and I have now joined uh, the board as a treasurer. But simply becoming a member of your local bike club or bike association, it's more than just the 30, 40 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it is um, to, to become a member for the year. I mean, the money helps with, you know, trail upkeep and that kind of stuff. But when it comes time for those trail clubs to advocate for a new trail system, their membership numbers matter. And it's really difficult, even with Strava and with the other, you know, their apps that are out there to show ridership on the trails, to, to show how much use they're getting. The trails in West Michigan are getting a ton of use. And you can go out there on any given day, afternoon, you know, weekend, and there the cars in the parking lot, the parking lot's full of cars, um, and the cars in the parking lot have bike racks on them. But there's no way to quantify that. There's not a really good, easy way to quantify that. A really easy way to quantify that is just through membership. And so having members for these clubs helps them in their conversation with landowners to say, we've got a group of people that are good stewards and are friendly people and are gonna be responsible and want to be able to have access to these properties. And it helps build that case. And so it's really easy just to become a member. And it's really easy by becoming a member to be an advocate that way. Um, by becoming a member of a, of a, a club or an association you, in a sense, have become an advocate for the sport. So those are a couple of things that I kind of kind of thought about and kind of realized and have gathered the thoughts on for, um, for this year. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on different ways that you might engage and, and be the advocate. Um, there are plenty of, you know, state and national uh, advocacy groups um, that are also doing great work. Um, but don't feel obligated, like that's the only way that, you know, we can be advocates for the sport and, and attract new access. Um, there's a lot of smaller ways, so love to hear your comments. And for now, that's um, another issue of Comfortably Sophisticated.